minutes for the Astros in Colorado. Preston Wilson leading the majors in RBIs with 136 coming in. Two on for him. Rockies were down 3 0 in the bottom of the first. Wade Miller gets Wilson swinging. Bottom of the third, Wilson again. Chance to pump up that total. Again with two on. Not going to get in the RBIs like this. Grounds out to second base to end the inning. Bottom of the eight, 4 0 throws. A man on for Wilson. Octavio Dotel strikes him out. Wilson, the RBI leader, stranded five on the day. Top nine. It's already 4 0 Astros. Jeff Bagwell. He's going to connect for his 36th home run of the season. His third three RBI game since September 5th. First time Rocks have been shut out at Coors since July 4th, 99. That's 363 games. Cardinals barely breathing, hosting the Brewers. Woody Williams only one victory in his last 10 appearances. A 12.89 ERA for the month of September. Other than that, Woody's doing just fine, thanks. He's cruising there. Freezing Pudsednik. After striking out the next batter, Woody looking for more. Facing Keith Ginter, strikes him out. End of inning. Woody doing well. Still 2 0. Top of the fourth. Woody facing Wes Helms. One on. Brown ball, Scott Rowland. Oh, that's masterful. The starving, the 5 4 3 double play. Rowland also homered earlier. Woody goes seven the last three hits, no runs. Bottom 5 4 0. Two on. Eduardo Perez. Three run homer number 10 for Perez. The Cardinals come through with their 10th shutout of the season. Edgar Renteria and Roland combining for seven hits. Well, despite the win, the Cardinals are about to drop off this list. Five games back, eight games to play, but they do host the NL Central leading Astros for the next three games. So at best, they could be within two of the lead by Monday. NL wild card wannabes, Diamondbacks and Dodgers. Eric Gagne entered a game with no out in the eighth and pitched two innings for the first time since April 2002. 59 consecutive saves dating back to last year. Asking for an awful lot out of this closer. Gagne pitching to Steve Finley with a runner on. Finley's going to double down the right field line. Sean Green hits the cutoff man, Alex Cora. If you're calling for Craig Council, leave a message at the beep. I'll call you when he gets home. There's two down. Next batter, Gagne to Junior Spivey. And just like that, Gagne out of his own jam in the eight, so he's got three outs left to get, right? Top nine, dodges up 2-0. Gagne to Felix Jose with second and third, and two down, gets him to ground out. Make it 60 consecutive saves. The Dodgers blank the Diamondbacks. It's super tight in the NL wild card standings. The Marlins just a half game lead over the Phils, but Philadelphia gets to play the Reds this weekend, while Florida has to face the Braves. It'll be interesting to see how Atlanta plays this. May it rest some people or go for the home field advantage. The Dodgers with the win, two and a half out. In the Central. The Astros with a half game lead on the Cubs, a five game edge on the Cardinals. In the wild card, Marlins with a game and a half lead over the Phils, two and a half over the Cubs, three and a half over the Dodgers. The wet weather could not dampen the heat between the Marlins and Phils. Dontrell Willis, seven and three on the road this year, taking on Kevin Millwood, three K shy of 1,000 for his career. Millwood stuffed nasty, just ask Pudge. Top of the second, Millwood against Miguel Cabrera. 1,000 career strikeout for Millwood. He had eight Ks on the day. No score in the fourth, Jeff Conan. Just the second bunt of his career, it's 1-0 Marlins. Bottom five, it was 3-1 Marlins, two on, two out. Willis facing Mike Lieberthal, just slices it up there. Down the line, this isn't going to be easy for Derek Lee. And good effort, but he can't hold on. Placido Polanco and Bobby Abreu would score. Phil's tie the game. Lieberthal has 76 RBIs this year. Your next batter, the always dangerous... Jim Tomei, Dontrell Willis all over him. Willis struck out Tomei twice. Top of the sixth, still tied. Millwood facing Cabrera, no question. It's gone, his 11th. Winds were gusting up to 32 miles per hour. Said Phil's catcher Mike Lieberthal, the wind just kept picking up. Willis against Polanco, 4-3 game, not anymore. The Phil's tie at Polanco's 14th of the year. This team doesn't quit. Bottom eight, Marlins decide to leave Ugi Urbina in the pen with a score tied at four. Instead, they stay with Chad Fox. Fox facing Tome. He's built for this. Jim Tome, number 43, tying the team record for most homers by a lefty. Harold Reynolds, what were the Marlins thinking pitching to Tome? Well, the interesting thing about this series, in game one, the first inning, they walked Jim Tome intentionally to load the bases. Now, in the eighth inning, the most important game of the series, they decide to pitch to him. He goes down 0-2 and still don't make a pitch to chase him out of the zone. It surprised me. The other surprise was we didn't see their best two pitchers out of the bullpen. You didn't see 
You didn't see uh, Uget Urbina, and you didn't see Looper in a situation where you got to close down the game in the heart of that Philly order. All right, HR, the fans begging for a curtain call from Tomei. They're now a half game behind the Marlins. Yankee players wondered aloud in Baltimore. Mike Messina among the loudest. Why didn't they just cancel the game? Let us get out of here. Well, they did cancel half the game, as you will see. Bottom of the second, Messina dealing to Davy Cruz. Filthy pitch there. Take another look. Check out the movement. Late breaking action. Messina had six strikeouts. Top of the third, Alfonso Soriano fouls off the pitch. The fans got a glove and he can't make the catch. E fan right there. Bottom of the fifth, we're tied at one. I got an idea, let's flash back. August 16th, same two, Jack Cust trying to score, slips, caught in a rundown. Watch this, the catcher is gonna run past him, he's got home plate. Check out the reaction of the Baltimore dugout there. <laughs> as he goes down. Why are we showing you that? Yeah, runner on second, Brian Roberts, base hit to left. Hideki Matsui comes up throwing. Pedro Swan rounds third, tries to hold, caught in a rundown. Well, the catcher doesn't run by him this time. He's tagged out by John Flaherty. Take another look. Check out the third base coach, Tom Treblehorn, right? Red means stop, green means go, something about yellow. The indecision was costly for the Orioles. Would be while the Yanks are running away with the East. That you know over Boston. The Twins were in position to sweep in the White Sox. They came in with a two and a half game lead, four and a half up on Kansas City. And out west, the A's with a four and a half game lead on Seattle. Wild card Boston with that game and a half edge over the Mariner. Mariners. White Sox needing a win to pull within a game and a half of the Twins. Bartolo Colon hoping the White Sox avoid a sweep. Jacques Jones, he's a fly guy. Two run home run ties up the game at two. Jones' 14th home run of the season. Twins fans love it. They got their Homer Hankies working in overtime. Oh, speaking of Homer Hankies, remember 1991? That's when the Homer Hankey was born. They ran wild then. Back to the game Thursday, bottom three. Cologne against Jones again, swing and a miss. Jones again, swing and a miss. You can't. Don't even think about getting the hate by Jones for a third time. His eighth career multi-home run game, third this year, number 15 on the year. Fans, of course they're going nuts again. That guy needs a homer hanky. Top of the fifth, White Sox down 5-2. Runners on the corners. On the mound from Minnesota, Kyle Loesch. Carlos Lee on the ground. It's a 5-4-3 double play. Inning over, Loesch out of the jam. Top nine, White Sox down 5-3. Carl Everett at the box, and Everett pops it up. Doug Minkiewicz, he's not going to let a wall get in his way of making a play. Would you believe he hung on? Take another look at the top ten nominee, of course. Tumbles over the wall, holds on to it. He also went one for four. He's hitting 304. Two outs, Eddie Godardo in, looking to put this thing away against Sandy Alomar Jr. Breaks his bat, pops it up. Game will be over. Save number 38 for Godardo. Twins complete the sweep. Kyle Loesch wins his 14th. Let's go inside this series. It's pretty simple. White Sox starters were hit hard. A combined 8.31 ERA and only 13 innings of work. No wonder they led for only a half an inning in this series. As for the twin starters, they didn't walk a batter in 20 innings of work. Minnesota's magic number seven. Royals hanging on for dear life. You know, they've got angels in the outfield in Anaheim. They've got a squirrel in the outfield in Cleveland, of course. Bottom of the first, Casey Blake single. There's a squirrel in the outfield. And this got us to thinking of great moments in squirrel sports history. In 93, Bucks Packers, Brett Favre's lucky leap. Favre deftly avoids the squirrel. Pretty great play. 2001, the U.S. Open. Nick Faldo on the green, long putt. Cue the squirrel! The squirrel almost oh, hits the ball right in the lie of his shot. Father would take an imaginary shot at the squirrel with his putter. 2002 Indy 500 practice. A squirrel nearly hit by a passing car. Man. Please back to the game. Ninth inning. Curtis Loscanic facing Victor Martinez. Lines it to left. Raul Ibanez, the great diving catch. No squirrel in sight. Jose Lima, 8 and 1 on the year. So here's the new deal in the Central after the Twins polish off that sweep of the White Sox. Now Minnesota gets to open up a weekend series with the Tigers, while Chicago has to play the Royals. One of those two will likely be all done when the series concludes.
We hit the AL wild card scene, beginning with the leaders, the Red Sox hosting Tampa Bay. Here's Manny Ramirez, bottom of the third, two on Boston, and a runner on third. It's a ground rule double to right. That would score Todd Walker, give Boston a 3-1 lead. 3-2, bottom of the sixth, Ramirez in a top 10 nominee. Long solo shot. 35th of the season, fifth time in his career, he's at 35 or more home runs. Top eight, Tim Wakefield was in cruise control. The knuckler gets Jared Sandberg there. To the ninth, Pete LaForest leading off. Pops to shallow center. Walker out, off his glove. That's an error on Walker. Two batters later, after a Marlon Anderson fielder's choice, Toby Hall, base hit to right couple of men on so Grady will go out to get Wakefield field gets a standing ovation eight in the third one earned run he's won seven straight decisions against Tampa three batters later young young Kim gets Rocco Baldelli to end it Sox are 27 8 against Tampa since last season so with Boston winning and Oakland next on their schedule the Mariners could not lose against Texas top of the first no score Carlos Guillen pops it up Jermaine Clark shaking his tail feather coming out of nowhere to make a great catch a rod in the tenth leading off Harold Reynolds should the Mariners pitch to him I don't think you consider walking Alex Rodriguez in this situation because he can steal bases, he can steal second, he can steal third, put a lot of pressure on your defense. And also, he has a tendency to chase balls out of his zone. You can get him in that way. But Barry Bonds, I'm putting Barry on. He's got way too much discipline. Shiggy Hasegawa dealing to A-Rod, driving it. That's going in the gap right over the head of Ichiro. A leadoff double for Rodriguez. Only hit of the game, hitting 296. Later in the inning, bags full, nobody out for Lance. Knicks, Knicks loops it. It falls. It's a game-winning RBI, said Knicks. Hasegawa kept it low and away, and I got enough of it. Hey, now the Mariners are close to being out of it. 2-1, 10 innings. Texas wins, deflating the Mariners. So, the Red Sox will enter their weekend series in Cleveland with a two-and-a-half game lead over the M's in the wild card. Seattle drops three of four to two.